It's about drugs and money and guns. And this is the kind of firearms that our special agents and our detectives and our deputies face every day as we fight this war on drugs. So don't let anyone tell you for one moment that this is just small amounts of drugs and it doesn't mean anything. This is what it's all about and if it doesn't mean anything, why do our deputies have to face these guns with this kind of ammunition on uh, ammunition abilities? Why do our DEA agents face this kind of thing? I'm going to set this off to the side where we present the rest of the conference. Ladies and gentlemen, this investigation began in October of 13 for the Sheriff's Office when DEA was already working an undercover investigation and said, can you assist us on some surveillance in your county? So as we were doing the surveillance in, in this county, working with our, our colleagues and allies, DEA, we recognized that one of the suspects that all of a sudden showed up at one of the surveillances was a fellow by the name of Luis Rojas. He was not only a previous target, but was a target of a current investigation that we were doing separate and apart. And we found that DEA and, and we were in fact working on some of the same people. On November the 7th, we began working with a statewide prosecutor who approved a wiretap so that we could go up on the telephone of Luis Rojas. So now we're working with DEA on their investigation. DEA obviously with the Haida task force is working with our detectives and we're up on a telephone as of November the 7th. As we listen to Rojas's conversations, we determine that the real boss of the operation, and you can follow along on the org chart, is a lady we call Ma Lopez. Ma Lopez, was really the local boss of this particular operation. So of course we spun off on Ma Lopez's phone as well. She was the one doing all the business with the Eldon, or the big boss. The Eldon we believe is Javier Flores. Javier Flores is from the Southern California area there's warrants outstanding for him at this time, and we're looking for him. We're not absolutely sure that's his name. He has several names, we're told. But Javier Flores imports the dope from Mexico. From there, we know he distributes it to Los Angeles, to Las Vegas, to Atlanta. And from Atlanta, that's where we received this load of dope that we're going to speak about today. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a very, very large narcotics investigation. And quite frankly, you can tell how big and how important busting up this group is when we had the special agent in charge of this area who came up from Miami to be with us today. So during the investigation, as we were listening to the conversations, we took off over $200,000 in cash from Elzer Merced at a Tampa hotel during the operation. He also lives in Los Angeles. 
and there are outstanding warrants for his arrest right now as well. So when we talked to Merced and we said, like, where did this $200,000 come from? He said, let me just tell you the truth. That's always a warning. That this was given to me by a man and a woman at a Walmart. And I was to deliver it back to Los Angeles. So we asked, well, who are you supposed to turn this back, back to Los Angeles? To who, where is this going? And he said, well, I don't know that at all. Now, as this operation went on, about the time that the $200,000 was taken, that's when we found out that they were going to the voodoo witch doctor. They became concerned, and the witch doctor said, don't worry, don't worry. It's not the police that are after you. It's not law enforcement. Look for the middleman in the operation. That's the person who ripped off the 200000 because obviously, Ma Lopez and Rojas were concerned that law enforcement was looking out for them. So that's why it's Operation Hoodoo Voodoo, because we hoodooed the voodoo witch doctor. And as a result, the investigation went on. So, as, as March the 18th, we began to round up everyone when the mother load of dope, which you see to my left here, arrived from Atlanta. Now the route it took was Miami to Los Angeles. The, this truck that delivered it, this semi-truck, left Los Angeles, went to Atlanta, from Atlanta, they met at Love's <clears throat> Truck Stop, which is on Interstate 4 at Highway 557, just outside of Auburndale. They delivered this dope to Rojas. And as a result, we seized about, 40, about 44 pounds. It's 20 kilos of pure methamphetamine. <clears throat> This methamphetamine, ladies and gentlemen, is, is just as pure as it comes. This is straight from the lab. Now, we estimate that Mrs. Lopez was to pay about $500,000 for this when she would turn around and sell it in its current form for about $2 million. But now let's get to the street level. By the time this is sold to major distributors who sell it to minor distributors, who sell it to street dealers, and on the streets of Central Florida, which is where this was destined for, not just Polk County, this was a distribution site, but it would have been about $8 million in dope. As part of the operation, we served six, six search warrants. And you can see some of the items we seized. For those of you who don't think this drug trafficking is serious, that it's real dangerous, this is a clear indication. Where you have drugs, you have a lot of guns, and you have a lot of danger. We seized approximately 100 firearms. We seized bulletproof vests. We seized a silencer. Yesterday, in addition to the 200000 that we'd already taken off, we seized tens of thousands of dollars more. That has been sealed up and will be counted as part of this wrap-up on the investigation. We seized about one pound of meth yesterday. During the operation, we seized six vehicles and a semi-tractor trailer. And we seized thousands and thousands of rounds of ammunition. But let me tell you a little bit about the folks that we are working with here. We're dealing with Ma Lopez. Now I want y'all to get a grip on this, and I'm gonna try to say, stay absolutely totally sane when I say this because it just drives me crazy. In 2006, we arrested Ma Lopez with three pounds of methamphetamine 
and $170,000 in cash. She was sentenced to three years in state prison. Upon release from state prison, she was deported to Mexico because she's illegal. Well, Ma made re-entry into the country illegally and continued on with her methamphetamine organization. And when she popped up during the middle of this investigation was the first we knew that she was back in the country. So as the investigation is unfolding, and as we're hearing her talk about all of this large drug dealing, when we're taking off $200,000 from some of her runners, are you ready for this? We discover that she's getting federal assistance. Now you explain to me how she made re-entry into this country illegally after being a convicted felon, after serving three years in prison, and she shows up at a public assistance government office and they sign her up and give her some more of our taxpayers' money. Does that just drive you crazy? You and I go to work every day, and we work hard, and we pay our taxes, and we don't mind helping those that need help, but we're given a drug dealer who deals in millions of dollars worth of drugs federal assistance. I think we need a federal investigation into how in the heck that happened. So, if that's not enough, you know, you would, there are people who lead you to think that these minor drug dealers shouldn't be arrested. But how about that? You like that? That's the criminal record of one of the guys. Just, this is minor drugs. It's not dangerous. What the heck? So folks, when people tell you that drug dealing is a minor event in this country, and I look at this, and I see that 11 of the 25 that we've arrested or have warrants on are receiving federal assistance. While we're seizing hundreds of thousands of dollars from them, while they have tens of thousands of dollars worth of dangerous weapons, it makes you understand that somebody on television, and I would suggest everybody that's appearing on national television or local television telling you, Drugs aren't that big a deal. Drugs aren't bad. Are just absolutely, unequivocally, without any doubt, lying to you. So, in addition to that, we have Joshua Widows and T.J. Scott, who are or were known gang members, and they were associates with a fellow by the name of Matthew Tutt. Now that may not mean anything to you, but Matthew Tutt is a person who ambushed and shot and tried to kill two of our deputies not so many years ago, and ultimately Matthew Tutt was shot and killed by one of the deputies after he had been severely injured. We have outstanding warrants for them, and they are doing what? Selling drugs. And of the approximately 100 guns we seized, 75 of them came from Joshua Widow's house alone. And he ran from us yesterday, and he fled from the vehicle, and he had four guns in the vehicle with him when he fled. It's important to know that there were other casualties in this investigation. There was a one and a three-year-old baby. They were victims. And you know we had to call DCF in order to turn the children over to the state because all of their relatives were either arrested or implicated 
in this drug operation. We know there have been at least 114 previous criminal charges lodged against these people. We know that that goes from everything from drug dealing to assault on law enforcement officers. Currently, with the assistance once again of DEA, our HIDA task force members, and our detectives have filed 66 charges, current charges, and they'll be prosecuted as well. Ladies and gentlemen, we have busted up a huge methamphetamine ring that was delivering drugs throughout Central Florida, and it would not have been possible without the assistance of DEA. So this is important, why it's so important for us to work well together. Because what started out with the DEA's investigation branched over to us and then we discover this huge operation in the middle of that. So without saying more and before we take question, let me turn this over to Special Agent in Charge Mark Truville who will give you more information. Good morning and thank you, Sheriff. Uh, I think Sheriff Judd has done an amazing job of laying this case out for you, and I'm not going to bore you with uh, more details of, of things the Sheriff covered, but I will give you a bit of a perspective from, from the DEA point of view. I am Mark Truville. I'm the Special Agent in Charge of DEA's Miami Field Division. Um, up here we have our Orlando District Office who works so closely with uh, the men and women of uh, all the state local departments here up in, in the central Florida area. Uh, this investigation for DEA began in March of 13, and as the sheriff said, once we started getting into the investigation, we realized we were running into a concurrent investigation being done by Polk County, and as is always the case in central Florida, the agencies came together, joined resources, and started working together uh, on, this, on this investigation. What we encountered through this investigation is one of the most significant multinational criminal organizations in the state of Florida. This organization, led by Mark Concepcion Lopez, was distributing crystal meth. And, and what we're talking about here, folks, is we're talking about ice. We're talking about not just meth, but ice, crystal ice. These folks were refining to the highest degree. This is the top of the line you can get. This isn't just basic street meth. This is not meth coming from the one pot method. This is produced, highly produced in laboratories in Mexico. Um, and this, this methamphetamine was coming here into, into central Florida. We found out quickly that this, this methamphetamine was being distributed into Polk County and surrounding counties in pound quantities, which is very significant. 44 pounds of methamphetamine have been seized. $300,000 is a huge statement to the significance of this organization. And it shows the problem we are being faced with methamphetamine being imported into Central Florida from Mexico. The source for this Mex from this methamphetamine is Mexico, and through California and Georgia is the route, as the sheriff explained, into Central Florida. As we speak, DEA agents and deputies are flying to California right now to work with our office in Los Angeles to apprehend several more suspects in this case and hopefully the actual source of supply. Ladies and gentlemen, let me reiterate one thing the sheriff talked about which is critical. We're talking about 106 weapons we seized here, 40 semi-automatic rifles, silencers, and a grenade launcher. Folks, that's more long arms than most police departments have in the United States. If there's any doubt that anybody has about the significant ties between drug trafficking and violence, the evidence is overwhelming. Please take a look here. Listen to what the sheriff had to say. This goes hand in hand, and it is a problem. So I, I, just, want to thank, I just want to thank all the folks that were involved in this. Sheriff Judd, the men and women of the Polk County Sheriff's Office, the investigators we worked with in Lake Osceola, and um, um, uh, I'm sorry, I'm missing one, one, uh, one department I know we work closely with, Polk, um, I'm sorry, which county am I missing? 
Orange. I apologize, Orange was with us as well. Um, um, and, and I also want to thank uh, 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 Pam Bondi and his statewide prosecutor's office, Prosecutor Gillespie. Um, my guys tell me that he was going all night long with them. Our deputies and our agents haven't had any sleep in the last several days. Uh, prosecutor was uh, side by side with them the whole time, and, and that's how an effective prosecution works. Um, and I'd also like to take a second to thank my own uh, men and women of the Orlando District Office who have done such a tremendous job and go to such great lengths to cultivate the tremendous law enforcement relationships we have here. This is an investigation. You could see there were three or four different investigations going here. And if the agencies up here under the leadership of, of, of our office in Orlando and sheriffs like Sheriff Judd didn't come together immediately, this could have been just a lot of roadblocks for everybody. But because we work so well together, we had the tremendous success we had. So thank you very much. With that, we'll accept questions. But by the way, one of our county commissioners, Ed Smith, is with us today. He is a former Winter Haven police officer and has a real interest in and is one of our rock solid supporters as we go out to fight this war against bad guys. So Commissioner Smith, thank you for being with us today. Thank you very much. Any questions? Brady, the really interesting thing is this Hulu connection, the Clinton Media connection. How much was this voodoo priest consulted and for what kind of issues? They talked to the voodoo priest constantly. And that gave them the reassurance that everything was all right. In fact, after the $200,000 was seized by law enforcement agents, they went specifically to him on this particular occasion. They called him the old man, and he said, the old man said it's okay. There's no problem. It's not the police, but you got somebody crooked up in the organization that you need to deal with. Look out for the guy who had possession of the, of the money originally. But what I thought was really interesting, and this is Polk County vernacular, how we hoodooed the voodoo man. The night before we served all the search warrants and made all the arrests, he told them, don't worry about it, everything's fine. Mm -hmm. Well, I agree with the voodoo man. Everything's fine. Polk County's safe, and there's a lot of drugs that's not in Central Florida. So voodoo man, keep telling that same information because it, it, we appreciate that a lot. Is voodoo man local? We, we don't want to tell where the voodoo man's from, but... It, because we're keeping that a secret. And if we told you, then it wouldn't be a secret any longer. Is he in this room? <laughs> he, you know, you look re remarkably like him, I might add. <laughs> Other questions? Is this the biggest type of bus like this that you guys have made? I don't think it's the absolute largest we've ever made. We've made a lot of large arrest over the many years that I've been with the Sheriff's Office. But it is in the top one or two, yes. And in those weapons, I mean, do they really concern you? Because those just don't look like, I mean, those look like uh, military artillery. They, they do concern us because they use that, those firearms to protect themselves from other drug dealers, from ripoffs. See, we have a lot of, a lot of folks that go in and try to do home invasions. So those guns are not just to protect the dr these drug folks from us or to use to assault us. They use those guns to protect themselves from each other as people come to their homes to try to rip them off. When you're dealing with hundreds of thousands of dollars worth and up to, as we see here, millions of dollars worth of dope, it's serious and it's survival of the fittest on the streets because they can't come to law enforcement or call DEA and say, you know, I got this real problem. A guy just stuck a semi-automatic gun in my face as he ripped off my kilo of pure co coke or pure meth or whatever the drug is. But, th but this is the real world of drug dealing and drug usage. And it goes from the top of the or operation. And because of our partners with DEA and because we had the patience to work this thing with wiretaps, which is a very complicated process, we were able to get to the very top of this organization. And we, we still have 
we have work that we may be able to do now downward to get some of the large dealers that were underneath them. So the investigation's not over today, just the first big roundup of the investigations over today. Now those two men, are they local, widows and, and Scott? Yes, they are. Lakeland. <clears throat> they are from Lakeland. And they're very dangerous people. They, once again, one of, the, one of their cohorts shot down two of my deputies and tried to kill both of them. And you said one of them, a uh, widow, uh, ran from you guys yesterday. He ran from us yesterday. He yes, he did. But we'll find him. We will track him to the ends of the earth. We will find him. We will find all of them. They can bank on that. You can turn yourself in or you can run, but we're going to catch you every one of you and lock you up away from civilized society. How far is the orange and Osceola? Is it just a stretch? I didn't hear, I'm sorry. Is it just stretch of the orange and Osceola as well? Yes, the, 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 the ice that was coming in here was coming into Polk and then going out into the different counties around, and that's why we found that uh, we were, were ended up working very closely with the other counties nearby as well. Thank you all very much. Have a good day.